Uh, good evening, everybody. We are at the historic city of Antwerp, gathered for the Global Indian Business Meet under the patronage of Horaces, the Global Visions Community. On the right is Mr. D.K. Jain, the chairman and of Fluxer Group, and Gunjan Sinha of Metrix Stream, which is a GRC company based in USA. Uh, Mr. Jain, my first question to you is that you are famous and known legendary for your writing instruments. Luxor is a worldwide brand. For you to venture into a totally new domain of nanotechnology is something which um, a lot of people are thinking about and looks very exciting. But tell us, how do you think about this going into nano? George Shema, I must tell you that I am not an MN MNC. I do business with passion. I'm a first generation entrepreneur who started his career at the age, young age of 19 years. At the time when I was the president of one of the Delhi University College, so there was a big movement of students. Those days was the Indo-Pak War. Mm -hmm. The students were talking about different careers. Somebody was talking to go to the military academy. Somebody was talking to become a movie star. Some wanted to become a medical student. But I was talking that India needs a product because Indian literacy rate was only 35%. So I thought that in the future, when the, the literacy rate goes to 75 to 80 percent, there's a huge population. And there's a product called writing instruments. I just picked up myself, dig out myself. A writing means that you start from the student age, when you go to a school, and to the chief executive of the country, use a pen. Mm. So I picked up this industry as a writing instrument industry. And moreover, basically I'm a vegetarian. I believe that vegetarian is, vegetarianism is a, is a key thing for a humanity and human body. If you cut the human body, I was in the pre-medical, when I cut the human body, I saw that the intestines are so little and passing through the cologne and other places, the meat cannot go through it. So I was, I was thinking that I should pick up a business which is in reality is a vegetarian and non-violence. And I picked up writing instruments because this is not relating to meat eating, it is not related to liquor, it is not related to cigarettes, it is not related to abusive drugs. So I call my people when I speak in a, a stage to the students, sometime to MBA students, say, I am in a business which is called a noble business. So I call it a noble business, then they ask me a question that what is the color of your blood? I say, I have a blue blood, I don't have red blood because I am in a business of writing instruments, a noble business. This is how it started as a passion in this business. Now, from this uh, passion in the writing instruments, you seem to have now moved into nanotechnology and you've put a new line of things which come up for cleaning instruments. How did the shift take place in your mind and uh, you running it yourself and how did the germinate? Is it Indian technology or what you've done with it? Can you tell us something about it? Well, this question is asked by many people to me. Okay, where is the writing instruments and where is the technology called nanotechnology? See, when I started and I moved on and in, the, in, the, in about 15 years before, I found that the things are changing into India. It came as a fiber optic technology. Then came as a biotechnology. Then came as a information technology. I picked up fiber optic technology, which is now in a telecom industry. So I am one of the largest manufacturer and investor into a company, which is in the fiber optic company. Then I moved into, I saw that the real estate is coming to the line. So I went to the real estate, SEZ. Then I thought that hospitality is moving into it. So we went to hospitality. Then I thought that instead of doing this business is how to build a brand worldwide. This should be the basic thing. So I picked up nanotechnology in the area of surface cleaning and impregnation. And fortunately, by my passion and going into it, I suddenly invented a new thing. That is surface cleaning and also protection. I call it two in one. And this is first time in the whole world. This technology has been done by all Indian materials. We have, we have substituted all the imported ingredients into Indian ingredients, and this technology is now nearly about 95 to 96% Indian. And, and the technology is basically, for 100 years, everybody around the world is cleaning the surface. So what is the surface? Surface can be plastic, can be wood, can be glass, can be marble, can be stainless steel, can be brass, can be anything. Anything is a surface. Carpet. So all these surfaces were cleaned by, by a normal system, and everything has a detergent in it. And detergent is not good for the atmosphere. Basically, it, it pollutes the atmosphere. So we created a technology where nanoparticles are binded on the surface by way of a technology, and they create a difference between the atmosphere and the surface. And this binding, so-called, you can say in Indian language, a film, the, the width of the film is three or four nanometers. And one nanometer is 
one hair width divided by 60,000 times is equal to one nanometer. So we have to maintain the film, film width to three or four nanometers. And then by anything which goes into the surface, it, it will stop. And by force of gravity, nothing can go in. It rotates on the surface like a, like a dropless, and you can clean it. So this is a technology which is, and there's some social objective in it, you know. Now, Indian, in India, we are finding that people are cleaning their cars in the morning every with a, with a, with a bucket of uh, water and, and a cloth, and they waste about 15 liter water every cleaning in the car in the morning. Now, India has got 40 million cars. If I can change the habit of Indians that they nanotize their cars, India can save 600 million liters of water every day, which is 60 crore bottles of one liter every day. Right? And water is in such a short supply. So we have also invented that technology, which is going to be launched probably in the month of September. Amitabh Bachchan is our brand ambassador, which is, he's, he's informing the whole country, Pani Bachao, Desh Bachao. Or is ek Pani Ki Balti Se Gaon Ki Pyaas Bush Sakti Hai. So then we thought over that, okay, the whole world, everybody's having a mobile in his, in his pocket and computers and tablets. If I also see your mobile, it must, must be dirty. Every mobile has a dirt on it, and dirt sticks on it. So by nanotechnology, you can clean your, all these gadgets very easily. So that creates an atmosphere. And secondly, this has some unique feature points. We can save water, we can save labor, we can save energy, and it is eco-friendly. So this is going to help the whole technology. So I picked up into this area that this is the tip of the iceberg. Then there's the solar panels. The country is spending millions and billions of rupees into the solar panel industry. You can't believe that when the panels, that when the solar panels are put into a field for 20 years, what happens? Continue. And when, when these solar panels are put into a field, and what happens? There are 50,000 solar panels in the field. The woman, after every three days, are going there with a small labor of three to five rupees, and then they have to clean, clean the panels, you know. But with our technology, the, when, whenever, whenever, once you nanotize these solar panels, that you, you, you don't need to clean it every day. It is only after a period of six months or one year. So water will, rain cannot go in, dust cannot go in. And energy, which is about 18, it is reduced automatically to 12 when the rain and the dust goes into it. It, the yield can be up to 16. So we save a lot of energy for the country. Lot of investments is returned back. So this is another technology. Similarly, it comes into a cement industry, you know. You find when the rains are there, every basement has a water inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the water peeps through the uh, surface and goes inside. So once this technology is built up, blended into the cement industry and concrete industry, then water cannot force to go inside. We can save this. All the real estate, you see the heritage properties. Yeah, Lal Kila in Delhi, Red, Red Fort in Delhi, Hamayun Tomb in Delhi, even our Rashtrapati Bhavan, because this is all sandstone. And you find all these stones are having this, uh, the buildings are not properly protected. Okay. So this technology, we can also protect the heritage properties also. Uh, I can over to you, Gunjan. Uh, the Made in India being a preferred tag is what people are aspiring for. And uh, you, as you know, that building a brand which is recognized the world over is a big issue. And uh, lots of companies in India are still uh, piggybacking on lots of international brands. Uh, Luxor has been one brand which is recognizable at least in India, nation, continent being there. What is your views on brand building as a part of the Made in India preferred tag to grow, industry, uh, grow the business? Since you are in that kind of area where you look at these kind of things, maybe have views on that, please. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that's, a, that's a great question to ask. And, you know, and uh, I, for one, Firstly, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with you know what Luxor Group. You know, as a child, I still remember I used to use uh, the the Luxor uh, uh, writing instruments as you just described it, and it's great to see that the brand you know after all these years is still th in not just living but thriving. And one of the things which I genuinely believe that Indian companies haven't done enough of, but there is a tremendous opportunity for them to do in the global markets is not just to become an OEM supplier to other global brands or multinational companies, but to actually venture out and create their own brand at a global scale. I feel many Indian companies traditionally do the heavy lifting, they do all the hard work, they build great technologies and products, and they create uh, an established market in the continent of the Indian subcontinent, if you will, but they don't go that extra mile needed to build that brand and build that uh, global presence 
which then allows them to actually take advantage of the global scale. And that is the area which I think you know, Luxor has done very well, and it's actually setting the, the, the milestone for many other uh, entrepreneurs and businesses to follow. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, another thing I want to ask you was that you have been exporting your product to a lot of countries, including Europe and all these places. Uh, with this kind of European crisis building up, what has been the experience of exporting the product and the acceptability of Luxor as an instrument in the European market or the far-flung markets where you countries and how many countries are exporting your products to? Yeah, uh, Luxor brand today is registered in 126 countries worldwide. Okay. And I started registering this brand about 40 years before. Oh, that time, I was not having that much enough money, but every month, whatever earning was there, I was putting behind the brand. And slowly, 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 I've got into nearly 126 countries. Today, our export is more than 90 countries in Luxor brand. I believe that if you have to build a brand, there are two things very, very important. Number one is that you have innovation and technology behind the product. You have to up, upgrade your product, innovation, and technology, which you can compare with the other, uh, other international players who have got deep pockets and large money. While an Indian entrepreneur does not have that much money, but if you can do that kind of a part of innovation technology, and secondly is the price, price, price consciousness that you can make your product at a cost-effective way, and then you can spend money behind branding, behind marketing, and behind all BTL below-the-line activities. That means in the shops, in the stores. So once your brand brand is seen in the BTL activities in the shops across the world, or all these stores, modern trade business, what we call, then any consumer going in, he will be getting a recall of the same. And this way, if you continue these three, four efforts, you are a company who can find a way that you can move into the international brand. Even Walmart sometimes sometime ask me, the please supply us in, in our own brand. So I'm, I, I'm very happy to tell you, Luxor pens are sold even in Walmart in USA. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gunyan, th uh, there has been sometimes, you know, talk about good corporate governance and corporate sustainability. And you being in the GRC field, you do a lot of uh, audits of lots of international companies, Indian companies. What has been your experience about Indian companies' uh, efforts towards good corporate governance vis-a-vis -vis the European counterparts? And where are we lacking if we are any, in any way these days? Just from the Luxor story here that, you know, sustainability is something which, you know, almost all entrepreneurs who are true entrepreneurs, who do this for the love of passion, and not necessarily in the act of making money, but when they want to do build something with real pride, they, they focus on sustainability at the core. Hmm. And sustainability across your customers, your employees, and your stakeholders, but also in the broader society. And that's where you know, lies the foundation of corporate governance and corporate sustainability. Because if you put the right disciplines in place, the right controls in place, and the right checks and balances, you establish that. I feel many Indian companies because we were trying to establish ourselves, haven't really paid attention to these subjects. But we now need more role models in that area so that we can have more people follow that suit. So, so this is, again, early in the genesis of the Indian corporate uh, evolution. But I do feel, feel that, as, as we just heard uh, on, on how Luxor has thought about you know, saving buckets of water, you know, to me, that's an example of corporate sustainability. That's an example of how you're building your brand and how you are thinking about overall governance across your multiple stakeholders. Uh, with this, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Jain, for being with us today and giving us a valuable time and your inputs. Uh, we are all very proud of the Luxor brand and you're at the Oasis meeting uh, next couple of days. I believe you're in a couple of panels and we look forward to hearing you and hearing your views. A lot of entrepreneurs are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Indian, for your insights. Thank you. Yeah. Lovely. Thank, thank you. Thank you.